Good morning, Bethel. And good morning online. Online, Bethel. We have in-house and we have online. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord that we can gather together, worship the Lord freely. We think of other provinces that are not able to do that. And uh, so we remember them. We say, Holy Spirit, you move. You work on their behalf, Lord. And give them the freedom that we have been very fortunate to have here in New Brunswick. So let's stand this morning and worship the Lord. Give our whole heart and our soul. It's usually our soul we need to give to the Lord because we're busy, busy, busy in there. Let's just quiet our soul this morning and focus on him. Worship him. He's worthy, worthy, worthy to be praised. Hallelujah. God, you brought out son of the wilderness. Oh, rejoice, my heart will always sing. Let our wandering souls in your faithfulness. Oh, rejoice, my heart will always sing. Praise the Lord. Are you ready to praise the Lord? Amen. I don't know what it is you came with this morning. It may have, I, matter of fact, I had somebody say that they were just felt they were really blessed. <laughs> well, that, if that's the case, that is the time when we can praise the Lord. Amen. We can yeah. lift up our soul. We praise the Lord with all of our heart, all of our soul, and all of our mind. Glory to God. And in the things that, that happened this past week, he's brought us out. He's brought us in in order. One day we're going to be brought up. That doesn't sound very good, does it? Praise the Lord, all oh my soul.
heart will always sing. Now I am not defined by my past mistakes. Oh, praise God. I just got to stop just for a moment on that one. <laughs> Glory to God. Because we're not defined by our past mistakes when you come to Jesus Christ. That is so good news. That's worth rejoicing in. Praise the Lord. Oh, my soul. With thanksgiving in your heart, give him praise, give him praise. Come into his presence with thanksgiving in your heart, give him praise. Your voice is praise, give glory. Same. 
the name of our own name. Give glory and honor and power unto Him, Jesus, the name. A new song for Jesus took the cares away. I've got a new song for my eyes are on his word. I've got a new song in my heart from the Lord. I've got a new song in my heart today. I've got a new song for Jesus.
Hallelujah. 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 The psalmist said, Why so downcast, O oh my soul? If you remember at the beginning of the service, I, I talked about your soul. It's your mind. Your mind. And when we feel downcast, and when we are struggling with things, we have to make a choice. We have to make a decision that we are going to purpose to praise him, whether we feel like it or not. No matter what circumstance, we must choose. We must make that choice and say, I will praise him. My soul magnifies the Lord. If you read the Psalms so many times, David, David expresses, you know, I'm so distraught and I'm so tired of my enemies chasing me, etc., etc., etc. And then he says, but I will bless the Lord. <laughs> he doesn't deny the circumstance. We don't walk around going, I have no problems. I have no problems. That's a lie. But we acknowledge <laughs> in the middle of my problems, I will bless the Lord. Even my soul will bless the Lord. And something changes. Something changes in your heart. Something changes in your mind when you begin to praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. <laughs> no matter what, we can praise the Lord. Let's do it right now. Just voice your praise. Just thank him. If that's all you can say is thank you. Just say thank you. Yes. Praise him. Hallelujah. We choose today, Lord, in the middle of our circumstance to praise you. Because you are good. Because you are good. You are merciful. We cannot go a day without you, Lord. We love you, Lord. We need you, Lord. We need your presence. Oh, we love you, Lord. Let's sing it again. I love you, Lord. going to come with a come and share right now then I'll do the announcements thank you throw a nugget at you this morning <clears throat> I was asked to do this the spur of the moment and uh, I'm not here to take up an offering but <laughs> I'm going to talk about giving I shared something with the pastor here some time ago when he spoke on giving and so he asked me if I'd share that this morning you know there's many places in the word where we're encouraged to give we know the scripture give and it shall be given unto you pressed down shaken together Shall men give into your bosom? We've experienced that. Then there's another verse that says, It's more blessed to give 
than to receive. That verse, we know that verse, but I quoted those verses because uh, I want to lead up to this next verse, and we've read this verse many times too, which is found in 2 Corinthians chapter 9, the seventh verse. And it says, Every man according as he purposeth in his heart, so let him give. Now listen to this. Not grudgingly or of necessity, for God loves a cheerful giver. Sometimes we read that verse fast and we skip over that and it's just another verse on giving. You know, when we talk about giving in the Bible, it's not necessarily meaning all the time money. You can give other things. We have ourselves to give. We have things to give, but it does include it does include finances as well. In the scripture, the Old Testament was translated from the Hebrew. The New Testament translated from the Greek. Now in the Greek, this word cheerful, we read it, God loves a cheerful giver. You know what that word actually means in our English from the Greek? It means hilarious. So you can read it this way, God loves a hilarious giver. <laughs> Think about that. You know, we've heard the statement made when we've heard, please, uh, in church, we've, there's been uh, fundraisers, and, and then we give to other things, and we've heard the statement made, give until it hurts. In other words, they want a lot of money. But you know what? That's not right. You give until it feels good. God loves a hilarious giver. So you give until it feels good. And uh, that will happen to you. I've experienced that myself. It's just more blessed to give. So if you want to be blessed when you give, give cheerfully, give hilariously. Just one little example. Early last fall, my uh, neighbor's lawnmower broke down and he wanted to borrow mine. So I said, sure. So I said, what's wrong with your lawnmower? Well, he didn't know. And uh, I'm not mechanically inclined. I didn't have a clue, you know, what was wrong with the lawnmower. So I said, give me your lawnmower, and I'll go get it fixed for you. And I took it up to Kenny. <laughs> and uh, I knew he knew all about lawnmowers, and so he fixed it. I paid Kenny, and I took it back to the neighbor, and the neighbor said, how much? The neighbor's a Christian. And uh, he said, how much? And I said, oh, didn't cost anything. I said, uh, it's a freebie today. Oh, he said, you had to pay something for it. I said, well, I did, and he wanted to pay me. And I said, look, no, don't pay me. I said, do you want to rob me of a blessing? <laughs> he said, oh, don't talk that way. <laughs> he knew what I meant. So I just encourage you to, when you give, give till it feels good. And it will feel good when you give in that way. God bless you. Praise the Lord. Start laughing. Yeah, as you give, just start laughing. If they ask you why you're giving, just laugh. It's just, this is hilarious. This is hilarious. <laughs> oh, praise the Lord. Thank you, Murray. Watch God bless. Watch God bless. Praise the Lord. Um, just a reminder of our uh, weekly services, our Bible study online at 2 on Wednesdays, prayer here at 6 p.m. Every week, God is so precious. His presence, never know what to expect. Praise the Lord. There's a board meeting on uh, Thursday morning at 9, 9 a.m. And uh, our Filipino service, 6.30 Friday night. And then uh, Brandon and Amber are going to be married on Saturday. Excited for that. And uh, we just want to bless them. We're going to put on a bit of a meal for them and just bless them. So praise the Lord. And next sun Sunday is normally our building fund offering. And right now we are in the process of purchasing the property next door. 
So if you want to make an offering or donation towards that, just mark on your envelope, separate from your tithes, property purchase. And uh, give what the Lord prompts you to give. And don't forget to laugh. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Bless the Lord, O my soul, and all that is within me. Bless his holy name. Glory to God. God is so good, and his mercy endureth forever. I hope you're excited about that. I started something last week from Mark chapter 4 about Jesus being in the boat and the disciples in the boat and uh, a storm hit and there's Jesus sleeping. Now, you might be going through life and something's hard-pressed and you might think the Lord's sleeping. Well, the Bible actually says that God, He neither slumbers nor sleeps. I can see you're all excited about that. Well, praise the Lord. I, I, I... There was a thought in that story that, that really stuck with me as we were ministering on it last week. And it was that line of the disciples to Jesus, don't you care, don't you care that we're perishing? I thought about that all week long. Well, I begin to look up other scriptures that talk about God caring. I think he cares for us. No, I'll rephrase that. I know God cares for us. You see, I, I just want to share with you uh, some other scriptures that bear that out because I, I think it needs to be solid in our spirit. That God cares for us. Now, that word, care, is an interesting Greek word. It's uh, the word, it's translated mellow. Everyone say that word with me, mellow. If you're watching online, you can say the word mellow. Now, it is not uh, M-E-L-L-O like we would normally, we would normally spell it, but in the Greek, the transliteration of it is spelled M-E-L-O, mellow, mellow. Do you understand that God mellows you? Now, in John chapter 12, in fact, let's do it this way. Heavenly Father, thank you for your word. Uh, there is something, Lord, I believe you want to instill within our hearts. And Lord, I, I can't uh, do that uh, for your people, but Holy Spirit, you can. So I ask that you would bring that word to our hearts and settle it, settle it, settle it, settle it that we would all know that you care for us. In John chapter 12, verse 2, there they made him a supper. Martha served, but Lazarus was one of, the, of those that sat at the table. Then Mary took a pound of very costly oil of spikenard and anointed the feet of Jesus. She anointed the feet of Jesus and wiped his feet with her hair. And the house was filled with the fragrance of the oil. Now, I could stop there and preach on that one for a little bit, but I won't. I got to keep going. But one of his disciples, Judas Iscariot, 
Simon's son, who would betray him, said, Why was this fragrant oil not sold for 300 denarii and given to the poor? Well, I don't know what your attitude would be, but this guy was an interesting, uh, is an interesting man because it goes on, uh, but one of his disciples, Judas Iscariot, Simon, is the one, why was this fragrant oil not sold? This is Judas. The scripture says that he said, not that he cared for the poor, but because he was a thief. This is the same Judas. He it also tells us as you read through the scripture that he was the one that had the money box and he used to take he used to take what was in it. Hmm. Can you imagine you would uh, maybe I can but the the fact is we would we could ask the question why would Jesus have on staff a man that was a thief. Ever thought about it? Why? Why? Don't you think, don't you think that that, uh, Jesus would have a little more care in choosing his disciples? Why would he choose this guy that he knew was a thief? He had the money box and used to take what was in it. Ever notice what Jesus says? Let her alone. She has kept this for the day of my burial. For the poor you have always with you, but me you do not always have. Interesting thought here is here was this woman that was using this oil to anoint Jesus' feet, mind you, with oil. The fragrance filled the house. She, by the scripture, doesn't seem to be a wealthy woman. Yet Jesus cares for everyone the same. I found it interesting that he would even receive this act of worship from someone that was poor. That also this Judas Iscariot, who was a thief, you know, he, Jesus just doesn't call him out in front of everybody. He doesn't say to everybody, this guy is a thief. This guy is going to betray me. He knows. He knows that Judas is going to betray him but he doesn't call him out. I wonder why. I, I think there's a, a clue in the scripture, for God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son that whosoever believes in him should not perish but have everlasting life. I think that Judas followed Jesus, hoping that like the rest of the disciples, that he felt that Jesus was, was the Messiah, but the fact is that he was going to uh, displace the Romans. The, all of the disciples felt that, you see. They, they all felt that Jesus was going to deal with all of these Romans and the Roman oppression and the whole thing. Jesus knows that, and yet he still loves these guys. And he, in his heart, he doesn't, he's not willing that any should perish, but that all should have everlasting life. And I think he gives us all opportunities, whether we're rich or whether we're poor, whether we are the most vile criminal or we seem to be one that helps in the community, God loves us all. In John chapter 10, verses 9, he said, I am the door. If anyone enters by me, he will be saved And he will go in and out and find pasture. If anyone, he said, I'm the door. I am the way. 
If anyone enters by me, he will be saved and will go in and out and find pasture. But listen to this. The thief, what was, Je- what was Judas? He was a thief. The thief does not come except to steal and to kill and to destroy. I am come that they might have life and that they ha- may have it more abundantly. Listen, he says, I am the good shepherd. The good shepherd. The shepherd, the good shepherd, gives his life for the sheep. But a hireling who is not the shepherd. Boy, this is interesting. The hireling who, he who is not the shepherd, one who does not own the sheep, sees the wolf coming and leaves the sheep and flees and the wolf catches the sheep and scatters them. The hireling flees, Jesus said, because he is a hireling and if he is a hireling, listen to this, does not care about the sheep. He said, I am the good shepherd. What is Jesus saying? I am not like the hireling. I am the good shepherd. I, what does he do? He cares. He mellows the sheep. Praise God. That's a comforting thought, isn't it? And he said, goes on, he said, uh, the hireling does not care, but I am the good shepherd. I, I know my sheep and I am known of my own as the father knows me even so I know the father and I lay down my life for the sheep and other sheep of which are not of this fold them I also must bring and they will hear my voice and there will be one flock and one shepherd glory to God We have a good shepherd that protects us, that guards us, that cares for us. Praise the Lord. Now, in Luke chapter 10, it it happened that as they went, he enters a village and a certain woman named Martha welcomed him into her house. And she had a sister called Mary, who also uh, sat at Jesus' feet and heard his word. But Martha was distracted. Martha was distracted with much serving. And so she approached him and she said, Lord, listen to the comment, do you not care? Wow. The disciples said it in a boat. So, Martha, distracted by much serving, she's in tune to what she's doing. Jesus, do you not care that my sister has left me to serve alone? Do you know sometimes that happens in church? Somebody is serving and they feel like they're their only ones. They could say, they could be talking to God. God, don't you care that I'm the only one serving here? Does he care? Yes, he does. He sees the heart. He sees the intent of the heart. Our Lord cares. He cares about our serving. He cares about our living. In fact, I I think there's a scripture that says that he knows how many hairs is on our head. I almost brought a wig. 
And, and I, was, I was really going to do this one up because this one is a really, really good wig. It doesn't look like me at all. You, you see, and, and, but if the Lord cares about, if he numbers our hairs that are on our head, don't you think that he cares about us? He cares about us in our serving he cares about whether we're in a boat or not in a boat. He walks with us. He talks with us. As his sheep, he cares for us. Praise the Lord. He desires that, that all would hear his voice and follow after him. He cares. Praise God. Thank you, Lord Jesus. So in First Peter chapter 5, Verse 6, it says, Therefore humble yourselves under the mighty hand of God, that he may exalt you in due, in due time. Sometimes when we're serving, we think that we got to have notice of what it is we're doing. Well, huh, funny thing. David took care of Goliath. But nobody was there when he killed a bear and a lion. He did that when no one was looking. What we do in the secret, when no one is looking, builds a foundation in us. So when the giants come, we will have the understanding that we are under his care and that we listen to his voice and do what he says. Praise the name of the Lord. So humble yourself under the mighty hand of God that he may exalt you in due time, casting all your cares on him for what? He cares for you. Praise God. Why don't you turn to your neighbor and just tell him, God cares for you. Praise the name of the Lord. God cares for you. Praise the Lord. He has you in mind. Thank you, Jesus. Praise God. For he cares for you. So be sober. Be vigilant because your adversary, the devil, walks around like a roaring lion, seeking whom he may devour. Resist him steadfast in faith knowing that some sufferings are experienced by your, by your brotherhood in the world. But may the God of all grace, who called us to his eternal glory by Jesus Christ, after you have suffered for a while, boy, that sounds like a, the Christian life is a bed of roses, doesn't it? After you have suffered for a while, perfect, established, strengthened, and settled in you. To him be the glory and dominion and forever and ever. When you go through battles, when you come in, when you go through them, you find out that you are perfectly established and strengthened and the presence of God is settled in you. He is, he desires to build in you a part of a firm foundation. That firm foundation is uh, so that you, when we were talking with the men uh, yesterday, it was, by the way, we had a wonderful men's fellowship. Every third uh, Saturday, the men will gather, praise God, at three o'clock. We had a wonderful time. And the one brother brought, brought the scripture of, of uh, Ephesians chapter six, verse 10, uh, and it talks about the armor of God. Wherefore, take unto you the whole armor of God that you may be able to stand in the evil day. Stand. And let me tell you, that standing, is, that standing you've got to be sure-footed in this thing. You're not standing wishy-washy, but you're standing in the, in the strength and, and in the presence of God. And right when those uh, moments are low, you've got to cast all your care on Him because He cares for you. Why in the world? Be sober, be vigilant. Casting all your care for He cares for you. And right after that, He's saying, be sober, be vigilant. He cares for you when the devil tries to take you out. Huh. 
Is your pillow mellow? When you go to sleep at night, do you realize that God's taking care of you? Praise God. Are you resting in His care? Second Thessalonians chapter 3, verse 3 says, But the Lord is faithful. He will strengthen you and guard you from the evil one. Okay. I'll take that. Thank you, Jesus. Glory to God. Thank you, Lord. God cares about you. And He is continually keeping you. If you go to the amusement park, um, these days we can't. But if you go into a mall, in some places you can't, and you, you know, most of us in the, in, that are in-house anyway, um, our, our kids are, are all growing up. But remember back to the days. Some are watching online and they've got small kids yet. But I'll tell you, when you go through a mall, amusement park, or, or into any store, you watch over your kids, don't you? You know their every move. You know exactly, you know exactly where they are. Your, your attention is on um, buying or, or picking up uh, grocery items. Uh, but you are constantly, you've got one eye on the shelf and another one over here. You're using your peripheral vision. I used to tell my, my boys when I was coaching, it's not just about being centered on the ball. Everybody wants the ball. But you've got to know where your, uh, where your opponents are. You've got to know where your fellow players are. You use your peripheral vision. I can see both of my hands because I've got good peripheral vision. Praise God. But I'll tell you, in the kingdom of God, we're going to need that peripheral vision. The reason why I'm talking about our kids because the way that we care for our kids, our heavenly Father will care for you. Glory to God. God is faithful. He is faithful. He will strengthen you. He will guard you from the evil one. Huh. God cares about you and He is continually keeping you. Hebrews chapter 7 verse 25 says it like this. Therefore, He is able once and forever to save those who come to God through Him. He lives forever to intercede with God on their behalf, on your behalf. If, if the Lord did not uh, care for us, why would He intercede for us? Oh, praise God. That is good news. He is always interceding for us. Praise the name of the Lord. He's faithful. In 1 Peter chapter 1, verse 5, it says, And through your faith, God is protecting you by His power. God is protecting you by His power. There's a wonderful passage in Romans 8. It says, what shall we say about such wonderful things as these? If God be for us, who can ever be against us? Since he did not spare even his own son, but gave him up for us all, won't he also give us everything else? Who dares to accuse us before God, before, before us? Who, who dares to accuse us whom God has chosen for his own? Okay, that's big. Thank you. I thank you, Lord. That's big. Thank you. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. That's awesome. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. No one for God himself has given us right standing with himself. Who will then condemn us? No one. For Christ Jesus died for us and was raised to life for us. 
and he is sitting in the place of honor at God's right hand, pleading for us. God's care. Can, ever, can anything ever separate us from Christ's love? Does it mean He no longer loves us? If we're in trouble or calamity or persecuted or hungry or destitute or in danger or threatened with death. But as the scripture says, for, you, for your sake we are killed every day. We are being slaughtered like sheep. No, the writer says, no. Despite all these things, no. Overwhelming victory is ours through Christ. Thank you, Jesus. Overwhelming victory is ours through Christ who loved us. Neither death nor life, neither angels nor demons, nor our fears for today or our worries about tomorrow. Not even the powers of hell can separate us from His love. woo Glory to God. Thank you, Jesus. No power in the sky above or in the earth below. Indeed, nothing in all creation will ever be able to separate us from the love of God that is revealed in Christ Jesus our Lord. Amen. Glory to God. Glory to God. God is continually caring and protecting you. You know, there was an older fella. He was known for his godly life. And he was asked one day, when he was tempted, what did he do? Well, he said, I just say, Lord, your property is in danger. When you commit yourself to the Lord, and I'm talking to you in-house, and I'm talking to those online, when you commit yourself to the Lord, you are God's property. You belong to Jesus. The Bible says in 1 Corinthians chapter 6, verse 19, you do not belong to yourself, for God bought you with a high price. In Ephesians chapter 5, verse 29, he says, No one ever hates his own body, but feeds and cares for it, just as Christ cares for the church. That's mellow. That's that word care. That's mellow. Christ cares for the church. And what he has begun in you, he will complete it because he cares for you. So the next time the devil comes knocking at your door, you say, Lord, your property is in danger. But then you say to that evil worker, I believe in the Lord God. I was bought with his blood, with his blood so that makes me his property. Glory to God. That's one way to deal with the attacks of the devil. Next time. Next time things get stressful. Instead of saying, God, don't you care? Just remember his goodness. God preserves you. He protects you. He keeps you by his power. For God cares for you. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. I would like to share with you a song that I wrote in 1992.
And it talks about, well, I'll just say it. Are you caught into the trap of frustration? Are you living with the thoughts of the past? Are you searching for a cure for your diseases? Our God cares. Our God cares. Our God cares about your affliction. Our God cares about your wounds. Our Father cares about your innermost feelings. Our God cares. He really cares. Have you slipped into a world of desperation? Are you wrapped up in lonely hopelessness? Are you dragged about by inner fears and sorrows? Our God cares. Our God cares. Our Father cares about your affliction. Father cares about your wounds. Our Father cares about your innermost feelings. Our God cares. He really cares. Are you at a point of making big decisions? Do you have need of money for a bill? Are you tired of the storms and heavy trials? Our God cares. Our God cares. Our Father cares about your afflictions. Our Father about your wounds. Our Father cares about your innermost feelings. Our Father cares. He really cares. Our Father cares about your affliction. Our Father cares about your wounds. Our Father cares about your innermost feelings. Our Father cares. He really cares. He really cares. scripture says to cast all of your cares on him for he cares for you if you're watching online or if you're in the house and you desire prayer to help you don't have to go through it alone you can email us you can um, go to our website and get information of how to do that um, you can give us a call that's also on our website for those that are in house, you desire prayer, you can just come to the front and allow the Spirit of God to minister to you. Heavenly Father, I thank you for your word. Your word is forever settled. And you are so mindful. You see the sparrow that falls. And if you cared for them, how much more do you care for us? You care for the people that are in British Columbia, Alberta, Saskatchewan, Ontario, that are going through life a little harder than we are. 
And Lord, we pray for those that are in the Maritimes and in Quebec. Lord, we ask that you would make yourself real to them. They'll realize that your strength is available, your power is available, and your care is available to them if they surrender their lives to you. I ask, Lord, that you would go with them in their going out, their coming in, and their rising up, and their sitting down. And that, Lord, that you, they, you would open their eyes, you would open their ears, you would soften their hearts so that they can turn to you, the Father who cares. In Jesus' name, amen.